Okay, I wasn't gonna share this story with y'all because I know some of y'all a little bit sensitive and I know some topics be triggering y'all. So I'm letting you know now. If you're sensitive to adult style language or verbiage. You got your kids with you. I might want to keep on scrolling. I don't come at me in the comments and say I didn't warn you. Jesus help us, I'm gonna get banned for sure. Okay, so what happened was I was doing surveillance on this guy. This fellow was in a car accident and he was suing for like buku dollars, right? So I go to this guy's house, I post up on surveillance. His wife leaves for work. He takes some youngins to school. This guy's wearing like SpongeBob pajama pants. 40 years old out in public, but it's fine. He takes the kids to school. His homeboy's still in his jammies. SpongeBob jammies. I'm thinking he's for sure going back home. He doesn't go back home. This fellow drives his butt to a not so great part of town. Like one of those places where they're just like known for selling snacks on the street corner. Okay, so it's like 7 a.m. He's out here all willy nilly having conversations with like a lady of the night, or in this case of the morning, and her manager. I'm really trying not to get banned off social media. Well, this scene was straight up out of Grand Theft Auto. Like if GTA was a television series, this would be it. Anyway, so this guy finishes his morning meeting with his friends, co workers, I'm not sure. And he goes to leave. Well, he gets in the car and one of the young ladies. Of the night or the morning, she's hollering after him. She's like, Oh, daddy, let me catch a ride with you. And he's like, Hi, right, baby girl, get in. She gets in the passenger seat and they leave. Well, so, of course, I follow them. Well, they pull up to the shop. They park in the parking lot. They're in the car for about 15 minutes. And though I cannot presume to know what was happening during that time, listen, if the cars are rocking, don't come and knock in. They don't take a rocket surgeon. Well, don't start clutching your pearls yet. So they finish meditating. They walk into this retail establishment together. They even open her door for her. And they're shopping around inside. So I get covert video of the subject and his SpongeBob pants and his lady friend walking around inside this shop. Now, I don't know if you've ever been in one of these places, but I imagine you can imagine. I'm sure kind of imagine. I mean, I imagine I don't have to spell it out for you. But these walls are basically like floor to ceiling toys and gadgets and devices. I mean, there were things lighting up. Some of them were in boxes. And on the boxes, there was like a picture of a person demonstrating the, 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 the contraption. And some of them, you're just looking at them like, like, you have no idea what's going on. And there's a ton that even, like... Y'all, I was questioning my whole life. Like, I was impressed with some of this stuff, right? But I also questioned every bit of my anatomy. Like, wait, that goes where? But I mean, like, it's fine. I ain't here to yuck nobody's yum. You do you, boo. But anyways, believe it or not, there was also other patrons inside this retail establishment at 7 a.m. And so as I'm videotaping, I gotta keep my camera, like, real close to my chest. It's like, I don't want anybody to see that I'm videotaping somebody else inside this adult retail establishment. Because, like, number one, they'd probably call the cops. And probably, they probably, rightfully so, they should. But number two, I don't want to get blow my cover. But also, mainly, I ain't trying to look like a damn pervert in this place. These folks would be in here thinking I'm some kind of peeping Tom. Anyways, this place also has like private theaters. I ain't going into no more detail. Y'all could just use your imagination from this point forward. Anyways, I went back out to my car and just waited for them to leave. Well, so, anyways, they finally leave. He fell in his SpongeBob pants, walking out to his car. His little lady friend right next to him. He gets in and they take off. He goes back to Grand Theft Auto. He's there for about 25 minutes and then he leaves by himself. So, this guy goes back home, right? I'm thinking, whoo, day is over. No, ma'am. No, it is not. The day is not over. He leaves a little bit later, like around lunchtime. This time wearing a SpongeBob t shirt. But I mean, you like what you like. Bless it. Well, I follow him over to like a medical facility and he goes inside with a neck brace on. He wasn't wearing that thing earlier. He was wearing it when he went to the doctor. Anyway, so he goes inside. Looking all feeble. Walking slow. But that's not my business. I'm like, Paul Blar, we just observe and report. He goes in the doctor. Comes out the same way. Very slow, very feeble. Leaves the facility. Takes off his neck brace. And he goes and picks the kids up from school. They all go home. The wife comes home that night and it's happily ever after, right? Wrong. Well, I finished my case. Turned it into my client. I'm done. Y'all, I wasn't done. A while later, I get a subpoena. They want me to go to court and testify on this case. Well, they're swearing me in and I see that they are loading up my video to play. But here's the kicker. The video that I upload to the client, the actual video they see is a version that's basically like, so like the parts where the subject is not in the shot. His attorneys don't have time to watch all that, right? Well, my subject's attorney was trying to get my testimony thrown out. So he asked for all the raw footage, right? Y'all, as this jury is watching my video, all you see when the subject is not in the shot, balls and shelves of contraptions and toys. And the d and the b plugs and the expanders and beads and ropes and like gadgets. And in one of the shops, my fella had his arm around his Grand Theft Auto girlfriend and they were like hiding behind one of the shelves. And I didn't see it before. But he had his hand in her pants, like down the front. And all you see is his elbow. <laughs> you guys, I learned that part of the complaint of his injuries besides his neck was his right shoulder and elbow. Look, y'all, I'm sitting on the stand just as professional as I can be. And I look over to my right and the jury just says all the blood drained from their face. The subject's wife is sitting there. And my subject is just sitting at the table looking like, yikes. Y'all, they made me testify to my credentials. And that guy's attorney all but told me, get the hell out. So then I went home and sent them a bill for my time. And that's the last I heard about that case. I don't know what happened after that, y'all.